Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS AH64D video, we're going to learn how to get this bird up in the air. Uh, first we'll talk about hovering, then two different ways you can taxi the aircraft, and then two different ways you can take off. But before we get too much further, let's uh, press right control and enter at the same time to bring up our controls indicator. And you can see that up here in the top left corner. So first we have this big uh, cross that dominates most of the... What's that Mirage doing here? Another one. Right. So the cross here represents what our control stick is doing, or what we call in a helicopter, a cyclic. If we push forward, it's going to dip the nose and increase airspeed. If we pull back, it will raise the nose and decrease airspeed. If we go uh, left and right at low airspeeds, it will slide the aircraft uh, laterally, left and right, or at higher airspeeds, it will roll the aircraft. At the very bottom, we have our indicator for the anti-torque pedals or the rudder pedals. And much more so than say a fixed wing aircraft, you want to have a quality controller if possible, whether it's actual rudder pedals or like I do, uh, a quality uh, hat switch to control the X and Y axes uh, for the anti-torque pedals. Along the left side, we have a unified controller for both the collective position as well as the two uh, power levers. So as we uh, pull collective or pull pitch, you can see it rise and fall. And for the power le levers, we want to keep it just here in the fly position. And this way, it'll keep a constant RPM of 101%. Uh, and really, the only time you would ever want to bring this out of the fly position was either a training situation or if you had an engine out. So we'll just keep it in the fly position for today. Uh, next, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the power settings. Uh, now, of course, here on the engine page, we have our torque. Right now, we're at 17%. But you know, based on your weight, uh, your elevation, and temperature, the amount of torque uh, for hovering and operations naturally will vary. Now, it needs to be a uh, uh, fleshed out quite a bit more but if you go to the main page the good performance page you'll actually see a lot of the estimated data here but again at least in early access this could be very rough but we'll tighten this up in time okay so that's my little preamble here at this point let's go ahead and talk about uh, the two different techniques of hovering the aircraft So we talk about hovering, there's uh, two principal things we're going to keep in mind here. Uh, first is the uh, symbology up on the HTU or the helmet display unit. And this can be really handy uh, for a nice precise uh, pickup or uh, pulling collective. Uh, the second are those outside visual references, what we call far rocks and near rocks. And even though you could actually uh, do a hover based on just one of those, the, the best hovers are going to be a combination of those two. But regardless of how you do it and what works best for you, there's some principles you're going to need to keep in mind here. Uh, the first is as we start to pick up collective or picking up, it's going to start generating a slight uh, sliding of the nose to the right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a little bit of left boot or left uh, anti-torque pedal to counteract that. Uh, the second is on the right side it's going to generate some translating tendency and we're going to have to put a little right cyclic to counteract that. So let's talk first about some of the symbology we're seeing here. Uh, right now we're in the HDU symbology uh, hover mode and in the center we have our line of sight uh, cue which we talked about before. But in this case you can think of it as a top-down view of the helicopter with the four spokes being our four rotors and the very center being the rotor mast. Now, in the very center right now, we have a small circle, and that's our acceleration cue. And the acceleration cue, uh, when it's in the middle, it means that we're stationary, not moving in one direction or another, which as we're uh, stationary right now, it's not moving. But as we uh, pick up and we start going in one direction or another, we'll start to see it offset from that center point. And in most cases, it's going to be due to what we're doing with our cyclic. So in many ways, you can think of the acceleration cue as a representation of what we're doing with the cyclic. Now, as we start to move that acceleration cue outside of center, we're going to have the velocity vector line also grow from the center towards the acceleration cue. Uh, but the big thing about the uh, velocity vector line that its length indicates the speed at which we are moving. Now, here in the hover mode, the max length is going to be six knots. 
Okay, let's take a look at this in operation. So I'm gonna pull back just a tiny bit of collective. I'm gonna feed in just a tiny bit of left boot, a little bit of left cyclic, start raising. Get a little light on the wheels. I'm using my anti torque pedals to center up. I can, using the cyclic, if I pull back, I can move that acceleration cue back. If I go forward, it's going to go forward. Center up with the cyclic. Start pulling back further. And the key is not to chase that acceleration cue. Right now we're in uh, in ground effect or IGE, and that's uh, 48 feet, which is also the uh, rotor disc diameter. When we go outside of that, we're going to be in OGE or outside of ground effect. And it's going to take a lot more energy power to maintain a hover. Let's do a slide to the left. We can see the uh, velocity vector now, about six knots. About four. There we go. Let's arrest it. Let's kill our forward speed by lifting the nose up a bit. And let's go back to the right. And I'll rest that by counteracting. Raise the nose a bit. Center up. Okay. We'll reduce collective and then set her down. You can see using the symbology is pretty easy, but the key is not to over control and use ham fist. A small deliberate uh, movements is going to be the key to a good hover. Now, I also talked about visual references. Uh, to get this across uh, best, I want to go ahead and turn off the HD entirely. When we talk about, again, uh, far rocks, near rocks. I'm going to use um, these bushes here as my reference for my heading alignment to keep my nose up. You know, where I want it to be. Uh, for near rocks, when you're looking at you know, marks in the pavement, uh, maybe this line here, uh, to gauge any kind of drift forward, back, left, and right. So it's a bit more tricky, and I'm still learning to do this just visually, but I think once you get the hang of it, it'll probably be just as easy. So uh, as before, I'm still going to put in a little bit of left foot, a little bit of left cyclic, start to pick up. Backwards too much. Forward. Right now, coming back. Stable, and we'll put it back down. Okay, so that's a look at hovering. Uh, next, let's take a look at taxi and aircraft. So we have two options to uh, taxi the 64. We can either uh, ground taxi with the wheels or we can hover taxi. We're gonna do a ground taxi first. Uh, first, uh, coming down here, we have our tail wheel light. When it's unlit like this, it means that the tail wheel is locked. And this is really handy if you just wanna go in a straight line. Uh, but if you wanna make a turn, we're gonna have to unlock that tail wheel, which we'll do here in a second. So to get going, we'll bring about 23% of torque and then push forward on the cyclic, and we're moving forward. Again, it's very stable because we have that uh, tail wheel locked. I want to slow down, just pull back on the cyclic, and wait for the acceleration cue to be in the center. There we go. So like I said, we could also steer. To do that, we're going to turn off the tail wheel. So now it's unlocked. Now we can use the anti-torque pedals to steer it on the ground. So again, we're going to bring up collective, go forward. Now using the pedals, left, right. Relock. We're going to have to make sure we're going a straight line first. You're not going to be able to relock that wheel if it's not a line forward. There it is. Yes, 
stop here. I'm going to recenter my controls and we'll do a hover taxi now. Now, hover taxi, it's going to be a lot like we did with the initial hover. So we'll get ourselves up into a hover and then essentially just going to dip the nose a bit and establish ourselves in in ground effect around five feet or so to taxi to where we want to go. And then we'll steer the aircraft using the anti torque pedals. But if we gain a, bit, a little bit too much speed, we'll probably have to put a little bit of cyclic uh, left to right as well. So again, we're going to pull a little collective, a little bit of right foot, a little bit of left select, uh, cyclic. We're up. Okay, push forward. More feet. So we've got 13 knots, five feet. Let's go ahead and slow down by bringing up the nose, reducing collective, and we're back down. As you can see, uh, uh, taxiing the aircraft is uh, really easy, both in the ground and using hover taxi. Okay, uh, last big thing we'll talk about is uh, taking off the aircraft, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, force trim. Now, taking off in the 64 is going to be a lot like we just learned in regards to a taxiing the aircraft. Uh, we can either go into a hover, either in-ground or out-of-ground effect, and then transition to forward flight, or we could do a rolling takeoff. Uh, first, let's take a look at a hover takeoff. So, let's go into a hover first. Again, a little left boot, a little left cyclic, and pick up. Myself pointed down the runway as best I can. And when we're ready, we'll just uh, dip the nose forward a bit. That's where we're six knots. I want to go to either transition or cruise symbology mode. And now we have our flight path vector, FPV. And we're just going to keep it there at the end of the runway. Passing through 25 knots. Okay, easy as that. Okay, um, go ahead and reset, and now we're going to do a rolling takeoff. So, if you're lucky enough to have a runway, though, this may be the easiest way to take off. And all we're going to do is we're going to uh, push the cyclic forward and start adding collective. And around 25, uh, 30 knots, we'll center the cyclic, uh, pull some additional collective, and we'll get airborne. And even though the uh, uh, tailwheel is locked, we'll still have a little bit of uh, pedal control down the runway. So, cyclic forward, pulling collective. Six knots, I'll go to transition. Now we've got our flight path vector. And our steering cue down the runway. Okay, 30 knots, center of the cyclic, bring up collective, and we're airborne. And continue adding some more collective. down the collective a little bit okay while we're airborne let's talk about uh, force trim so on the cyclic we have the force trim release switch or FTR and what that means is uh, on the cyclic and on the rudder pedals we have these magnetic brakes and those brakes keep those controls at a centered position from which the aircraft then maneuvers based on your control inputs and all the switch does is when we press it uh, forward it releases that 
magnetic brake and then we can move the controls to a new location then release the switch and then essentially reclamp those magnetic brakes on those controls at that new centered position so that sounds like a lot so let me use an example here so if you look at our slip ball it's about a half ball uh, to the left so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, press and hold the FTR and release so what I did there is I moved my rudders a little bit to center it up and now we're actually in aerodynamic trim but let's see if I want to go nose to tail trim so I'll do the same thing I'm going to hold and uh, keep holding down the FTR button and use my rotor pedals to bring my FPV with me and release. And now this is my new trim position. So this is a really handy way to set your trim and uh, pretty much keep it there. Anyhow folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on getting the 64 Airborne and I'll see you next time. Thanks.